Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. We're going to run through a couple of sessions that are going to cover the basics of print reading. Why is print reading important? I will tell you that if I ever had an employee that could read plans or instructions on how to build, they were a more valuable employee to me. So let's get into these basic ideas about the language of building. First, let's give a thanks to True Homes. They are a builder who have provided us with a great set of plans to study, and a good building always starts with a good set of plans. So here you're looking at the finished product. True Homes builds these homes. This one is called the Jasper. It is in Statesville, North Carolina. That's in the Appalachian Mountains in my neck of the woods. I'm from North Carolina. You can see the finished product here. How do you arrive at this finished home? You do it with a entire set of plans or instructions. These are specifics with a lot of information about every detail of this home to get it built. And as you can see here, every page has a specific purpose and carries a specific set of information that is generally not duplicated, but will relate to other pages. We'll get into that. As I mentioned before, this is a specific set of information. It also has to be verified by a professional. You should find an engineer stamp on a set of plans. And as you can see here, this is their official seal. This is a licensed engineer. These plans have been checked. They are structurally sound and they meet local and international building codes. That's important when we're talking about a set of plans. What do we look for in a set of plans? We need accuracy. All of the dimensions and the values and every piece of information in there, it can't be kind of what we need. It needs to be exactly what we need. So when it gets built, there is not any confusion and we have this accuracy and precision that we need to make a quality product. They need to be complete. There should be no questions. If we're looking from the beginning page to the end of the pages, we need to find all of the information we need in this set of prints. They also need to be legible. The text, all of this information needs to be understood and conveyed in a way that communicates to whoever's building what they need to know. They also need to be well organized. If you're spending a lot of time filing through all of the pages, trying to find what you need, then they're not going to be good to anyone. So we're going to go through some of the ways to index a set of prints as well. Here we have the title block. If we're talking about components on a set of plans, the title block is really important. A title block should carry through all of the pages, generally located on the perimeter, often on the right. And each title block will have separate sections in it to carry specific information. One of the blocks should have the project name and location on it. This is very important, as you can imagine. If we're building, say, uh, a true home in a neighborhood with several very close together lots, there might be several of these exact homes, or I should say similar homes, in very close proximity. What you want is to make sure that you're building the exact structure you need to be building in the exact place it needs to be built. So here we have the name of the property and the location. This is important start. Here you see the architect or designer. This block on the title block is going to carry this person on there and it should have some contact information. If you have questions about specifics on the plans, this would be the go-to person to ask about clarifications about any of those details. In this case, uh, True Homes is the designer or the architect. They're providing the plan so they have their contact information in this spot. Also, the sheet number reference is a very important part of the title block. This is how we're going to index very quickly specific views, specific information about this structure. It's going to save us a lot of time when we go to the table of contents and then go to our sheet number, this is the way we're going to get to what we need very quickly. Also in the title block, there should be a date that these plans were created and also a revision number. Often plans need to be updated or revised and that's always a good thing to go here to make sure that you're looking at the latest version of these plans so that you're getting the most current information on how to build properly. 
Scale is also included in this section, and we're going to talk more about scale. Scale is the amount of reduction of size that these plans are going to represent something real life. So a large size building will be, get shrunk down, and that will be a scale that will be spelled out here, and then we will reference that scale for more precision. So to talk about scale, it can be confusing to people. Scale is very simple. Anything can be scaled. We can scale the word scale. So here you see a large scale. That's S-C-A-L-E. We can make that scale or that word any size we want. And as we shrink it, everything about it shrinks. All of the aspects, the height and the width, all the dimensions shrink. So if you wanted to, to do half scale on this word, as you can see here, you're going to uh, make that half as high and half as wide. So this is half scale. Here we have quarter scale. These words are actually a quarter of the size of the original word. So if you think about you have the original or full size object and then you're just shrinking it to a specific size afterwards, that's all that scaling is. When we're talking about plans, our scaling gets very specific. So we're going to call out a specific scale. We might even have a small ruler. You might be used to this on maps. This is a very common thing to see on a map. You can actually use a ruler to verify the scale and then to measure things on those plans if you know what the ratio is or the representation of the specific size on the plans to the real life dimension. In this case, our scale is one inch equals 30 feet. So if we laid a ruler on this set of plans, every inch is going to equal 30 feet in real life. This is all that scale is. It's a very simple concept. It gets confusing when we come up with different scales and we try to transfer that to our plans or go back and forth from real life to plans. Some typical scales that you'll see in construction are always going to reference a foot. And we're going to change the inch representation of that foot. And we can use a ruler, an architect's rule, to measure those. A typical one would be one inch equals one foot. It could be one half inch equals one foot. It could be a quarter inch equals one foot or an eighth inch equals one foot. Always remember that your first number is your scaled down representation on your drawing. Your second number is always going to be your real life measurement. Here is your table of contents. We talked about your sheet number. Your table of contents is going to be like chapters in a book. This should be on your cover sheet on the very beginning page, and it's going to reference all of those different pages that are in this set of prints and what should be included on each one. So there are numbers that are going to reference this title block sheet number down here at the bottom. A closer look shows you that your cover sheet is even listed that's your first page. And it goes, typically, these plans are going to go from the ground up. So you're going to follow the set of plans from your uh, foundation up to your roof, and they're going to go through. That's not a hard, fast rule. You're going to find some details in the back that are going to skip around. But in general, you're going to find the front of the plans will be for the beginning stages of the build, and the, the later plans will be for the last details of the build. It's also important to note on the table of contents, you're going to have an index to the specific sheet that you need to find. So here is S3.1. This is my roof framing plan. At this moment, I need to check on my roof framing. So I'm going to file down, check my title blocks and find the page that is S3.1. Plans are a wealth of information. And there are tons of legends in a set of plans. And a legend is going to be a list of different items that will be found universally in several pages. So here you see a legend that is referencing a specific symbol for an outlet. This is an electrical legend. So all of these symbols will be found in these plans. And you will reference these almost like a dictionary or an encyclopedia. Here we see a schedule. The difference between a schedule and a legend is a legend is going to talk to us about symbols that we're going to find. A schedule is going to talk to us about specific information that we're going to apply to some of those symbols and to specific locations on the plans. This particular legend 
And I love this set of plans because I, have, I had never seen this before. This set of plans is talking to us about specific framing information. So you see here that if we reference this legend, a B in a triangle is going to tell us that at every window opening or door opening, depending on uh, if it's a door or window, we're, it's giving us framing information that either side of this door or window is going to have one jack and one king stud. So it's giving us specific information we can use to now frame all of those parts. Drawing views are very important and they are going to give us a lot of different insight into different things that are happening with the building. We need to look at this building in a lot of different ways to reveal all of its information. So we're going to see some plan views, some elevation views, and some section views. These are three main views and I'll show you how those are used. So here you see a plan view and universally plan views are always from above. So if we were in an airplane or a bird's eye view, they call it sometimes, we're going to see this building from directly above it. This gives us a perspective that cannot be shown in any other view. So any details that need to be shown this way will reveal themselves in plan view. An elevation view would be as if we are approaching that structure from a specific side, looking at it directly uh, face on. And you will see the heights of specific details. You're gonna see some different materials that are used on the surfaces. A lot of the, uh, some of the proportions, the, the door openings, the all of the features that are shown only show up in these views, these elevation views. Here we have a section view, and section views are very interesting because section views show you things that no other view can. This is as if we took a chainsaw and cut directly through a building in any specific location, and it's going to reveal interior things. Here you're looking at walls that have been cut through. You're looking at a floor structure that has a cut through it. We're even seeing an interior staircase here. So section views are very special and very specific and offer us information that no other view can. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.